Creepy children are as much of a horror staple as ghosts, zombies, vampires, demons, or conservative politicians. Horror takes pride in shock value, whether it be from cheap jump scares or poignant psychological unease. The most effective monsters make us feel uncomfortable and call into question our ability to fight them. We might be okay with taking a machete to Jason's hockey-masked face, but we run into greater problems when encountering a smiling child at the end of a darkened corridor. Something that's supposed to be fragile and innocent suddenly becomes far more unpredictable and malicious, evoking the unsettling concepts of corrupted innocence and horrifying juxtaposition. Can we fight this thing? Should we fight this thing? Anyone who's been picked on in primary school will already know that kids can be cruel and vindictive, and horror games play on this by dredging up such memories from the most vulnerable times in our lives. But for now, just try to ignore that playful giggle echoing from the shadows, because I'm Peter from Triple Jump, and here are the 10 creepiest kids in video games. Number 10. Little Sisters – Bioshock Rapture is a hellscape on the whole, with rabid splicers skulking around and lumbering big daddies ready to <laughs> kindly introduce you to the pointy end of their drill arm. So it goes without saying that friendly faces are going to be few and far between during your adventures in this dystopian city. But as if this place wasn't creepy enough, there are terrifying children running around everywhere. The genetically altered little sisters can be seen scuttling through these shadowy puddles frequently plunging their giant syringes into splicer corpses in order to harvest the valuable Adam from their veins. Via mental conditioning, the girls see the world very differently to the player, and can often be heard singing merrily during their grisly tasks. They innocently perceive blood as rose petals, big sisters as princesses, flies as butterflies, all the while covered in filth and screeching for their big daddies whenever danger draws near. It's this whole sense of eerie juxtaposition that makes things especially creepy. The girls giggle and hum to themselves, and even cheer on their hulking protectors as they seek to disembowel the protagonist. With such unnerving behaviour, they really don't do themselves any favours in the save or harvest debate. Oh, <laughs> don't look at me like that, you've all thought about it. That Adam bonus is just too tempting. Number 9. The Sink Child P.T. Where many similar games may utilise ferocious monsters or intense boss battles, the Sink Child does far less, but arguably achieves far more. It appears to be a fetus, writhing around in agony when the player discovers it in the bathroom sink, with its stubby limbs twitching weakly as it fails to crawl away. Yes, it can't hurt you or attack you, but it arguably evokes more unpleasantness than any other entry in this list. Lacking an official name, this creature is still shrouded in mystery though, which only adds to the spine-tingling nature of this encounter. The creature possibly represents the dead offspring of Lisa, the ghost that haunts the endless hallway. It's both pitiful and grotesque in appearance, which once again leaves the player feeling a little conflicted towards it. Should this innocent creature be saved, or is it a malicious demonic vessel for the dark forces of the house? We can only observe. P.T. unfolds around us, despite our willingness to fight or flee. In our powerlessness, being faced with such a grotesque and pitiful sight leaves us feeling even more distressed and vulnerable, which simply reinforces how effective and legendary the playable teaser really was. Number 8. Evelyn – Resident Evil 7 – Biohazard E001, codename Evelyn, is a genetically modified next-generation bioweapon designed to eliminate enemies without the need for physical combat. Needless to say, giving psychic mind control powers to a psychologically damaged child didn't quite go as planned. It's not as if anything in the Resident Evil universe ever runs smoothly anyway, so we shouldn't really be surprised when Evelyn goes on a murderous rampage, and seeks to forcibly create her own twisted family dynamic in the Baker's Louisiana Mansion. 
Her upbringing lacked genuine love, support and structure, resulting in her troubled and obsessed mind. At its core, it's a tragic tale of a child looking for the love she never had, but that's damn hard to keep in mind when she's skulking around the house like this, whether it be in the mental projections in Ethan's mold adult brain, or the even creepier, I would say, older, wheelchair-bound form. I just never know when she's gonna jump at me! Evelyn can be so childishly spiteful, with her violent tendencies accumulating in the horrific actions of the Bakers via her uncanny mind control. And there's no escaping her. She's not only in the house, she's in your mind, always watching and manipulating, ready to invite you to a family dinner one moment and slaughter you in the next. Number 7. Plague Babies or Filthy Ones – Demon Souls Infants are often symbols of purity and innocence, having no vicious intentions or ulterior motives in their behaviour. They possess an inherent fragility that the Soulsborne series took one look at and declared, hold my estus, before proceeding to design one of the most unsettling creatures in the entire franchise. These monsters infest the swamp of Maiden Astraea, wherein they spread disease and skulk beneath the surface of the putrid water, ready to surround and over overwhelm their prey. These nasty, nightmarish tykes attack in packs, and even respawn indefinitely after death. It's easy to let them overcome you with their sheer numbers and aggressiveness, and they'll be more than happy to keep gnashing at your shins while you hurriedly return to your bloodstain. Swamp areas are notoriously abysmal in any game, without the ever-present bloodthirsty plague babies trying to pull you under the surface. They make a typically bleak environment even worse, and can overwhelm higher level players within moments. Number 6. The Unbaptized Baby – Dante's Inferno the unbaptized babies of Dante's Inferno are disfigured infants condemned to limbo, wherein they're forced to suffer an eternity of torment. These bouncing baby boys, or girls, are certainly unpleasant to look at, but it's their long, razor-sharp claws that really remind the player they're not in Kansas anymore. Most of Dante's attacks can wipe them out easily, but this actually adds to the unsettling nature of their design. They still possess that mentioned sense of fragility. They may be ugly, twisted creatures, but they pose little threat other than being reasonably repulsive. Once again, the juxtaposition enhances the uncomfortable nature of the encounter. Granted, those claws are pretty terrible, but since these things are so easy to kill, there's no fanfare upon defeating them. It's a bit pitiful, to be honest. It's even easier to actually let the creatures amass into a big, slightly more daunting group before taking them all out with a couple of scythe swings. It's already a bit of a running theme in this list. You don't really want to fight them, but not because they're challenging, they just make you feel uncomfortable, which as an aspect of horror, is actually downright effective. Number 5. Akane and Azami Kiryu – Fatal Frame 2 – Crimson Butterfly What's worse than one scary child? <laughs> That's right, two of them. These hostile spirits aren't just your typical spoopy ghost girlies though. As per the traditions of their village, Akani was tasked with ritually sacrificing her sister, thereby appeasing the hellish abyss for a little longer. When Akani fell into a deep depression after the loss of her sister, her father had the great idea of making a creepy doll in the image of his deceased daughter in the hopes that it would, I don't know, comfort Akane and definitely not invite malicious entities into their home. Surprise, surprise though, making a creepy doll only made matters worse. Dark forces seized control of the damn thing, obviously, before manipulating Akane into killing her father as well. That, that really backfired. The corrupted spirits of these sisters proceeded to haunt the Kiryu house and scared the bejesus out of the player in Fatal Frame 2, and although you can set the souls free by finding the scattered parts of the doll throughout the property, we weren't all that pleased about venturing into the shadows, encountering other terrifying ghosts and scrounging in the dirt for Annabelle's lost limbs. Number 4. The Botchling – The Witcher 3 – Wild Hunt 
This being is created from the improper burial of stillborn infants. This this list is just a laugh a minute, isn't it? It skulks beneath the bed of expectant mothers, sapping their strength and feeding upon their blood. Ultimately, it kills both the mother and the unborn child, but not before it causes the parents to suffer from troubling nightmares, fever, delirium, and a general weakening of the body. But can we just backtrack for a minute? These ghost babies like to hide under beds. Oh, <laughs> someone's been reading Being Creepy for Dummies. It's this malicious intent of hiding under beds and sapping blood from victims that makes the creature truly horrifying. It's not like P.T.'s helpless sink baby, this thing is predatory, and even more ferociously hostile when it transforms into its deformed adult state if threatened after feeding. Thankfully, Geralt's here to remind us that the botchling can be cured of its ravenous nature by transforming it into a lubberkin via an elven naming rite and a proper burial ritual at the family's threshold, whereupon it will act as a guardian spirit of the hearth and watch over the family within. Oh, <laughs> thanks G-Dog, I can sleep a little better knowing that, but, but would you just mind checking under the bed before we turn the light off? Number 3. Grotesqueries, Drakengard Giant flying babies with electrical wings and sharp teeth are just one of the many forms these creatures can take. But when freaking the heck out of humanity is on the cards, it's no wonder they chose this as their go-to appearance. To understand the horror of such a design, consider that these colossal beings evoke imagery similar to that of Koji Matsumoto's artwork, wherein humans feel small and insignificant in comparison to these monolithic beasts much like our response to Lovecraftian concepts of horror. Having something hunt you down, similarly to how Mr. X pursues Leon Kennedy and Claire Redfield in Resident Evil 2, is definitely frightening, but it's nothing like feeling utterly minuscule beneath the heel of a creature that wouldn't hesitate to crush you like a bug. Number 2. The Ultimate Being, Parasite Eve Hey, have you had enough of giant mutated babies yet? Well, triple jump lists are here to serve. Or disturb, in the case of this video. So here's another heaped helping of horror with the ultimate being. The infant stage of this mitochondrial life form takes everything we hated about the grotesqueries of Drakengard and adds some extra repulsiveness to the entire design. Brace yourself for a swollen brain and bulging eyes, alien limbs and a scrawny skinless tail. Its wings seem to be far too small to lift its malformed body, but somehow it takes to the skies after emerging from its embryonic sac. Although this is just the creature's first form, it's definitely the worst of the bunch. There's absolutely a reason why these infantile creatures are so prominent in horror video games, and the ultimate being is a very good example. The creature's initial appearance is somewhat recognisable as a human baby, but there's something way more alien about it too. It's that weird mix of familiarity and unfamiliarity that really puts the willies up us. We know werewolves and zombies are dangerous, but a baby really shouldn't be, and it's just wrong when it turns out that it definitely, definitely is. And that's what makes these sorts of creatures so right for a horror experience. And number one, Alma Wade, Fear. All hail the queen of childish terror. Who else could take the top spot other than this icon of horror gaming? At first glance, Alma seems to be ghostly, otherworldly, yet also possesses manipulative mind-altering powers, as well as an active desire to hunt and kill for the sake of vengeance. She definitely has the cliched spooky little girl appearance, but it does work pretty well here. Surely she's one of the reasons this trope still exists in video games today. She gives us everything we want from such a character. Plus, she's not just a fodder monster or random enemy, the entire narrative revolves around her. She pervades every aspect of the gameplay. As she invades the minds of her victims, she also plagues the entire experience for the player. Her appearance in this form reflects her last conscious memory before she was sealed away by Armacam. Not exactly how she was, but more like how she saw herself. Her design was directly influenced by the child in Kiyoshi Kurosawa's Seance, but she also has obvious connections to Ring and The Shining. 
Truly, Alma embodies pure horror iconography, without breaching into the realms of parody or comedy, causing her to not only be one of the creepiest child characters of all time, but also one of the most frightening antagonists in general. Well, that's our list, and I'm thoroughly creeped out, so I'm off to purify the house with sage and candles, if you don't mind. While I'm busy spirit-proofing my bedroom, though, why not creep down to the comments section and let us know which spooky kids unsettle you the most from this list, and if we missed any out. You can follow myself and Triple Jump on Twitter here, and if you want to support the things you enjoy, then check out the rewards on our Patreon. Finally, don't forget to like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to the channel. I've been Peter from Triple Jump, and thanks for watching.